Just to start, uh, it is so cool to be a part of the TED experience. Uh, I think that it is deeply inspiring to see people flock to ideas, to people to come see new ideas and fresh ideas. And being a part of TED is also a really, really cool experience and, and very inspirational to, to hear a lot of new ideas. But the last three weeks have been very, very difficult for me because of this poster. <laughs> At Shanghai American School, this poster has been plastered everywhere. And that's created some interesting dilemmas for me because six to eight times a day, I get asked by students and colleagues, hey, uh, Zima, what's your TED talk about? And I believe so passionately in the experience of TED that I entertain that idea. And I go, well, in a nutshell, it's about education and how we probably need to fix a lot of things within education. And they go, wait, you're a teacher. Shouldn't you just be a constant champion of education? And I say, yeah, 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 hold on. And then I have to explain a lot more. I have to explain the idea that we've all been students. And raise your hand if you've ever been bored in a classroom. <laughs> raise your hand if you've ever been bored in my classroom. It's OK. You can do that. That's fine. That's fine. And so then the person goes, why would you create this self-admittance of this boredom guilt? And I go, don't worry, don't worry, I'm getting somewhere. I'm getting somewhere. We all spend a good chunk of our life in secondary education. And to be perfectly honest with you, some of it is not applicable. In fact, when you ask your friends and you ask peers how much of their secondary education applies to their current career, the numbers are pretty staggering. I did this all summer. It was really fun. Some people say 5%. The highest that I got in my informal survey was 30%. Yes, a human being told me that 30% of their high school and college career applied to their current job. That's ridiculous. That's a shame, right? So how can we maximize secondary education? And now the person who I'm explaining this TED talk to, they go, well, you got to have a hook. What's your hook? A nice meaty hook. And I go, well, that's easy, man. Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald Trump's my hook because Donald Trump is so relevant to this conversation. Currently, I don't know if you've been reading the news, Donald Trump is the chief executive of the United States. <laughs> he is president. And surprisingly, he has this much political experience. That's deeply fascinating to me because that also supports this idea that secondary education needs to be maximized at a much higher level. Granted, there's not a class called President 101 that he could take, right? But the notion here is that how much do we really need to get into the career that we want? And how many of us are like Trump, where we occupy a position that we weren't really trained for? And we learn on the fly. We learn as we go, because that's dynamic and that's formative. And they go, OK, that's a pretty good hook. That's not bad. When you say Trump, people are going to be like, OK, got it. <laughs> so then I share a little bit of my story with them. I'm a teacher. I love teaching. And when I was a kid, I just got really lucky. I liked algebra. I liked history. I thought it was just intrinsically fascinating to learn stuff about stuff. Well, that's not the common experience for most people. In fact, some people, you've all admitted, have maybe been bored in a classroom. Why? It's obvious. It's not applicable to you. You maybe haven't been driven to care, or maybe you're absolutely right, you're never going to use it again. All that fancy algebra, 
all that fancy history that you've been learning, guess what? You might never dust it off and it might not be applicable to any job that you'll ever have. And you kind of push back a little bit. This is when the person goes, well, yeah, but you know, I was kind of learning how to read and figuring things out. And that's not a good enough argument. That's a byproduct, right? So how can we laser focus that idea? And then they go, well, yeah, what's your idea? What are you going to tell the people? What are you going to offer? Well, I have a proposal. The proposal is that secondary education in the United States and throughout the world pairs down classes and instead provides students the opportunity to do small scale internships to see the world. Could you imagine what that would be like as a high school kid? Instead of going through three years of math, maybe two. Instead of going through three years of history, maybe one and instead be given the opportunity to see what actual real people do in the real world. How cool would it be to spend three days with a graphic artist, two weeks with a criminal lawyer, maybe even three months with a biologist? Now make no mistake about it, I'm not trying to tear down education. Maybe you actually like biology, and maybe that's your field of choice. But there kind of goes history to the side now, right? And maybe we should try to get you in that field early. Because this is really important. You all have a prefrontal cortex. It's a fantastic invention. And it allows you to predict the future, as our good buddy Dan Gilbert would tell us. The example that he uses is, think about this, predict what liver and onions ice cream would taste like. You have a prefrontal cortex and you can do that. But guess what we do to kids? We say, what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, there's no context. We haven't exposed them to anything. And maybe if you took enough history courses, you would say, I don't know, a historian. As a kid, I was exposed to school. So when asked what I wanted to be when I was 18, I said, I don't know, more school stuff? I guess I'll just be a teacher. And I, again, got super lucky, because I love what I do. But there's a lot of people who didn't get lucky, and they have to change their careers. And in fact, the average person in the United States changes careers four to five years. In 1970, it was two to three. And current research tells us that 21% of US graduates in college feel unprepared for the workforce. So let's get kids out into the real world. Let's make that experience better for them. And if they did 10 small scale internships, imagine if you asked them what they wanted to be at age 18. I don't think it's crazy to allow kids to make an informed choice about their life. Because the alternative is like the rest of us in the audience. Remember what it felt like when we were kids? Remember what it felt like when we were bored? Wouldn't it be great to give kids a better opportunity? And now the person's really into it. They're like, OK, cool. I'm on board. I want that opportunity. That'd be great, and I don't think it'd be that hard to do, right? Right? So they say, how are you going to close it? What are you going to do? And I say, well, I'm going I'm to take everybody through this little exercise. And they're going to find a shoulder partner. And they're going to ask their shoulder partner, what's worth learning? And they say, wow, that's a really good idea. What do you expect to be the result? And I say, I expect the result to be something entirely different for every single person. And that represents the dilemma that we have in education, right? The idea that it needs to be more individualized. And people need to be able to make informed decisions about the rest of their lives. Because they may not be as lucky as me and love what they do. And then the person usually says, that's cool. That sounds great. I think that'll be a good TED talk. 
and I hope it inspires change. Thank you.